Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, PO Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone number 0703 0363 0703 768198 Email address org. Or visit our might be very difficult to say to everybody and wanted to follow up particularly where we stopped you remember that we stopped at praying to become the best that we can be we were looking at people like Moses people like Samuel who so influenced God that everything all the pattern of the Old Testament tabernacle was handed over to, to, to Moses. And Samuel was such a man that he, he, he controlled the whole land of Israel for 40 years. And at the end, he went without any, any complaint. And God himself told him, said, look, don't worry. People have rejected me, not you. There's no problem with your life. And yet he did not cease to cry for the children of Israel until he died. So we looked at such men and we were actually to follow that up tonight. And I perceive the Lord just wanted to show it to us again in a very clear way. We dismissed the meeting abruptly because the realm our brother was going is not meant for those people. They will just get confused. And the little thing they should know, it will be dropped. Because I think God spoke beyond uh, the brothers and sisters that came. I think He focused on us. And I don't know what was your response. I don't know whether you prayed or you were praying for people. I don't know whether you told God that if there's only one thing, that will make my life count for eternity. I dare not postpone it again. That's very serious. Otherwise, God will reshuffle us. How else can God be so clear? Praise the Lord. How else do you think God will be so clear? <laughs> that there's a reshuffling of and that this reshuffling is quietly going on. And I was surprised that reshuffling was so wonderful. As Peter and John had the testimony of, uh, the, of Mary Magdalene, you again were surprised that up to the point of death, not only Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there, not only his mother's sister, but Mary Magdalene, that Mary, the junior sister of Martha, was also there. And I imagined how Peter came, gra, 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 he ran. And even out run John. And he went and he saw nothing. And I, I just, you know, it touched my heart. Supposing there was no Mary, what message would have gone into the world concerning Jesus? Because Peter ran back home and closed the door. And he must have told the rest disciples you could see where the seven of them went with him to go and fish. He said, don't finish. They stole him away. 
They stole in the well, so there's no worry I said again. Ha! John beloved went. He saw ordinary gray, gray clothes. He came back, he said, I saw grave clothes. I don't know what I saw. But maybe and remember when Moses, I mean when when the woman went in, she knelt down. Where they saw nothing, where they saw ordinary grey clothes, she saw angels. And angels said, He is no more here. He is risen as he said. Mary said, No, if you have taken him somewhere, tell me, I will go there. I must go there. I must go. And she, by the time she's turning from angels to go and look for Jesus, what did, what did happen? The master appeared. The Mary. She was the one that had the correct message. And it touched my heart. That supposing there was no woman like that, the whole gospel would have been upside down. Even the disciples couldn't, there's no way to retrieve him. Because I think the first message that Peter went and delivered was what Thomas Didimo believed. And told them, I don't, until I see him, and I must see his hand. The master had to come again. Before he rebuked their unbelief and they went on. So, I'm thinking very quietly in my heart that even the measurement of this first, the, this reshuffling, we need to be very, very careful in our lives. We need to keep praying. I think it was not unlike John to have run and followed Peter back. We was trying to keep company with Peter. He was trying to receive approval of Peter. That's why he went back. Otherwise, he followed Jesus to the point of death, isn't it? And he knew Joseph Arimathea. He knew everything. He could have investigated. And maybe the master would have come. So, at each point, all I'm trying to say is that there's no point at which reshuffling can take place. No point. In fact, a careless mistake can bring it. But I was imagining what could have happened. That Peter got lost. That reshuffling didn't stop where our brother stopped. I know he had to stop. But I remembered that Mr. Peter, after God recommissioned him and all that, they preached. But what was the commission God gave Peter? That you shall be my witnesses where? In Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. When they conquered Jerusalem, what did Peter do? He sat now. They were sharing bread. They set up an, a powerful headquarter. I think that headquarter deceived them from moving. They can't be as temporary as Jesus again. They couldn't be the kind of a pattern ministry that God wanted them to be. And we noticed Peter when they woke up and said, Well, it's not good for us to serve bread. Let's give ourselves to the ministry of the word and prayer. Let us appoint some people to be sharing bread. And their qualification is that they must be full of the Holy Ghost. So I kept wondering, has God ever Filled any man with the Holy Ghost in order to be sharing bread, to be an usher. Imagine.
Imagine a mighty monocle like Stevie, a mighty evangelist like Philip. Authorities kept him as an usher. The issue we are tracing, you must realign your friends. Any man who is no more going forward is likely to pluck you to where you don't belong. And Peter, they sat in Jerusalem. I was surprised that in that chapter, we didn't hear anything about Peter again. He said the word of God increased. And God was using uh, Stephen. For no man can resist the wisdom with which he did what? He spoke. And the day, the day, they wanted to kill him. He gave a serious exposition that up to today, whenever I read it, I wonder, so what was the difference between Peter and Stephen? What qualified Peter to give himself to the ministry of the word and prayer? And, call, and now the same thing disqualifying Stephen and made him an ordinary share of a bread. And when that man spoke, people cried. And the climax came when he said, I saw the Son of God standing, standing to welcome him. We don't know who is first to. And you see, the only thing we needed to know is that God's reshuffling and His method and His own measurement may not even be the popular measurement we will use. Are you understanding? Have we found out what I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to preach, the kind of person God say I must be? And whom are you looking at? that you can't throw in all your life and put it where it should be and damn the consequence. If it was wasted in the hand of Jesus, fine. Thank God when Mary Magdalene broke the alabaster box, everybody grumbled, including Mr. Iscariot. So why this waste? They would say it's a waste. But Jesus said, sorry, Anywhere the gospel is preached, you can't finish preaching the gospel until you have mentioned Mary. That's why I kept wondering this first that we will keep looking at. And Mr. Peter, persecution came. Do you know something? They did not move. Who did Jesus personally commission? Peter. He even told him, he said, Satan is planning to sift you. Peter, Satan is planning to sift you all. But I've prayed for you. Did he say amen? He did. He said, no, 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 you better don't pray for me. If all these ones deny you, I cannot. Why did Peter become reshuffled? He became overconfident. He took for granted what God had not shown him. He spoke beyond God's utterance in his life. That was why the master needed to push him aside because he's either always rebuking him and all that. He said, I pray for you and when you are strengthening, strengthening the rest of the brethren. God wanted him to be something, but he didn't receive the prayer. He went ahead and said, I'm going fishing. And he caused seven out of eleven to backslide. So even in ministry, when a man is missing his focus, stop following him closely. Stop following a man closely who is no more in tune with the simple truth you have got. 
Otherwise, you'll be entangled to do what you don't want to do. And Peter preached. The pattern God wanted to establish, they missed it. Instead of going to Judea and moving on to Samaria and moving on onto the uttermost part of the earth, you know what Peter did? He continued to remain in Jerusalem. There's only one trip he made to, jo to Joppa. And Joppa is still within the region of Jerusalem and uh, Judea. But when God sent for Philip, what did you see? That man sparked a revival. And in the middle of it, what did God tell Philip? He said, move. Go quickly and preach to somebody. Now, quiet things that made men to miss it. When Peter came back, what did he do? He had to explain to the council in Jerusalem. He explained the leading of the Spirit away in order to be accepted by them. And they said, okay, no problem, sit down, relax. And that was the end, chapter 11, was the end of Peter. Chapter 12 was where they were trying to kill him. So when a man of God is made of undo by people like uh, Herod, you need to be checking. Am I not missing something? So God had to open a new chapter in chapter 13. Somebody who will follow his own pattern. Somebody who cannot be glued to any place. Somebody who is not too concentrated and say, well, this one is mine. I will die with it. Somebody who is willing always to go forward, to go yonder. Even if yonder is not clear. The greatest trouble we will face is that many of us we would like to sit tight. Of course, you can't explain how did God bring you to the state you are now. But because that's what your eyes are seeing, you will sit tight. I'm not leaving it. I'm not, I cannot leave it. My life will be spoiled if I left it. I wonder what will be spoiled if you live your life. And let God carry it forward. Let God carry it forward. So why we pray this, the purpose of this retreat we are having together is clear. It is that we want to learn from God. We want to throw our lives on God. We want to get the best that we could get. And we want to lay a foundation such that by the grace of God, whatsoever it is, we won't grow up before we mature. We were listening to a message in the morning, but I'm sure we didn't listen to that aspect where we noticed that some people grew up before they grew unto his fullness. They were unable to grow again. Such men, we call them dwarfs. Dwarfs are people that mature too early. Their organs have stopped growing ever before it performed the function. There are many Christians like that, and there are many ministers like that. But we must make up our mind, not me. Not me. And whatever causes it, self, self, self-confidence, wrong alignment. I need to speak very hard on wrong alignment. Go we're in the world where everybody is looking for a company. We need to be very careful of wrong alignment. I think the safest rule, follow a man as close as you can see Jesus in his life. As long as Jesus becomes blood, even if he's making one or two statements and he's saying, well, we are all human beings. You need to keep your distance. Otherwise, when he rushed in and saw nothing, the best thing you may see was graves, grave clothes. You go back, nothing. 
And now I pray that each of us as our leaders, whom God is bringing men around our lives, a big challenge is here. The challenge of moving forward. The challenge of getting on. Making sure that we follow the Lord to details. We might not be popular. Because up to now, I don't think John was popular than Peter. Because on the day of Pentecost, who spoke? Now Mr. Peter. He was the mouth speaker. He wasn't as popular. And God had a very great program for John. Peter was saying, what shall this man do? You see, what concerns him? As if he should put him in his pocket. The master said, what is your business about that? If I told him to stay till I come, what's your business? And I have not known somebody who lived without fault. Like Peter. I mean like John. John in First John chapter 1. He was so fine. And the authority of a preacher. Can be higher than your life. Let's get it clear. Your life doesn't have to be noisy. But let the life be there. It subdues. If you don't. Run for life. And possess life. Your message will be empty. Mr. John said, The things that we have heard, the things that we have seen, the things that we have handled of the word of life, the same declare we unto you, that you may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is not with ourselves. Our fellowship is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's how I started this epistle. I have not seen any epistle as strong on sin as John's epistle. If you are reading John's epistle, you will have to recheck whether you are born again. Because he said, little children, <laughs> they call those men little children. What gave him that gap? Is it that he's the oldest man in town? No. He wasn't. But he had an experience with God. He had been through it all. He looked at big, big men. He said, Little children, let no man deceive you. Whosoever is committing sin, he is of the devil. For we know the devil started committing sin from the beginning. For this reason the Son of Man was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And whosoever is born of God does not sin. What? People loved us to remove that scripture from the Bible. Nobody preaches it on the pulpit. Because if you are preaching that, your church will scatter. I went to a church somewhere. I thought they have received me. I thought they have received me. I didn't know it's a camouflage. And we went on. And teaching and preaching. I did not know when I left. The next day, the, the, the leader of the church said, Well, let's balance out the matter. Let's balance it. He's not as serious as that. Not as serious as that. Because all the women that were committing sin were repenting and they were willing to pack out of their wrong places. Those that are painting their leaves in order to seduce men were rubbing it off and everybody became sober. In that church they don't cover head. Everybody started covering head in three days. People were crying. You can't excite them. They just said, that, look, we have not started. We have to face reality. The leader felt that the church is going to scatter. He said, it's not as serious as that. 
and he took time and preached away what we preached. I wonder, is that God? Is that why you have refused or me to go back to that congregation? Because they just knew that we can't come here for three times and that place will not collapse. But all that is nothing if they could find fault with our lives. Like he stood up. If it was possible for him to get something authentic, that would be the end of it. So we need, you see, when you now saw Mr. John, Years went by, he was still as fresh. When he went to chapter 2, he said, Beloved, love is of God. Whosoever hated his brother abides in darkness even until now. How else can somebody find out? And you can't refuse that kind of testimony. You must listen. He said, what we have handled, what we have touched, what we have experienced of the word of life, the same share we unto you, that you may have fellowship with us. You know the meaning of that? that? We are not looking for your fellowship. We are not so much interested in you following us. The only thing that will make you have fellowship with us is if you believe what we believe. If you shared what we shared, if you stand where we stood, that's the authority that backs up a man. And even as we are young ministers, so to say, and it's like we are running. One other thing we must remember is that we are going to have to leave the men on stage now. So we need to go ahead of them. We need to understand God better. We need to be intimate with the Lord much more than we are now. So, on a concluding note, as we break up tonight to go and pray more, I just propose that we should all pray. We should all just go on to pray. If the Lord sustains you to pray a little bit into the night, why don't you pray? If your body is so tired and you feel that, okay, why don't you keep quiet? Go and lie down. There is, there is holiness also in quietness. Maybe what God has said right now hasn't bound yet. He's just finding his place. You didn't know it. Maybe when you release your thoughts, the fire will burn more. So when you respond, it will be a final response. By the grace of God. So, uh, our brother taught us the song, I will go a little yonder. I got a different version of it. That anywhere you want, I will go with you. Whatever it may cost, I just must follow on. Even if friends and the world forsake me, I will go on. Anywhere, Anyhow, whatever it was, I will go with you. God wanted to do something. That's why He's beginning again amidst our lives. We ought to give it ultimate attention. We ought to pray. We ought to speak. We ought to hold His hand. And let us not leave this retreat that God has arranged for us. We came from far and near. Let's not leave it until something that really happens. I just felt that we're going to pray more. We're going to ask God for a definite touch of God. An outburst of, some, of the glory. Not necessarily all the glory. But because He doesn't do it that way. He does it in stages. That from one degree of glory to another. That's how He does it. 
So we don't want to stretch ourselves and the devil says, well, you have prayed so much. God is doing nothing. No. We want to know that. We want to grow on with the anointing. So that when the grace of God bursts us on our life, we have a commensurate life to hold it. To see God's wisdom. And we prayed in the morning that whatever it is, there's a cleft by his side where he will keep us. So that the world will not know we are there until we have done what we ought to do. One of the greatest problems our elders face is that the world recognizes them too quickly. They got into the limelight of the world too quickly. And yet look at Jesus. For all his years, all people knew him to be was what? The son of uh, Joseph. You don't finish. Why did God do that? As if he was shielding him. Because if they saw that he was the son of God, the Messiah they are looking for, they won't allow him to fulfill his ministry. They won't kill him. They will never touch him. One day he was preaching as if they should know him. Baba said, don't stop it. I arranged it. That in hearing they should hear but not understand. In seeing they should see but they will not see. I make their heart dull. That they can't see you. They can't know what you are doing for me. Stop it. And in Matthew 11, my master, if you read your Bible very well, immediately he just said, Father, thank you. Thank you for your hidden these things from the wise. You have received, revealed them to babes. For no man knoweth the Son, except the Father reveals him. And no man knows the Father except the Son. You don't finish. Then he said, Come unto me, O ye that live on a heavy lady, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and all that. That was the end of that chapter. I didn't hear him say such a thing again till he died. Jesus. If he was the perfect son, he was perfect even in obedience. He was the son Baba could correct and he would listen. And there and then, chapter 12, you go back and read. The Bible says, and he began to speak to them in parables. That's the beginning of all the parables. Parables. Somebody says, excuse me, why are you always talking to these people in parable? Ah, he said, so that in hearing they may hear but not understand. What kind of ministry is that? How can you be ministering so that people will not understand? You see, so there are many things God must open our eyes to see. Even in our pursuit for the glory ahead. We said the Shekinah glory is the one that the eyes of the world can see. What they see there is darkness. In fact, when they are looking at it, they say, what are you doing? You are doing nothing. You have done nothing. That's it. And I just pray that God will grant us grace to want to allow God to carry us to the fullness. Grace. The day that the Lord took them to the Mount of Transfiguration and they saw Him. They saw Him in His full glory. Do you know what Peter said? And he was the first one to speak. He said, let us make three tents for you here, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Let's just abide here. No need to go back again. No. We're not going down again. You know what God did? God smote him. He fell down as he was dead. From that point forward, they didn't even remember. Because if they remembered, how will the boys on the way to Emmaus not know him? How will the Bible record that even as yet, they have not yet understood the scriptures concerning Peter and John? God wiped it off. Should God begin to do something in our lives and deliberately, God make sure that men don't see it. Can we wait? Can we wait? So that there can be an outburst. 
Now when the apostle comes, we'll say, how did it happen? When did they start? And all that. Can we wait? Can we learn from the elders who waited? <coughs> Can we learn from people like Brakumuyi, whom, whom you didn't know? They started walking, writing tracks, doing all those things, selfless labor. Gathering thousands of people, feeding them free. How did they come about that? Who knew what they were doing? He would sit with people, he would train people, he would disciple them, all like that. Suddenly, he began to spread. And what was the reaction? The action everybody gave to it was that of opposition. I think God used that to preserve them. Nobody accepted them. Everybody was against them. And they went on, they stuck on to God. Stuck on to God. So now when God prays out, all churches now want to go and learn their strategies. The strategies you learn. <laughs> you see now everywhere has fellowship of young Gicho. The strategy we learn. Or life. How did they arrive at it? Just cause more confusion for the children of God because they have gone to import somebody's idea without touching his own life. So why we are praying that this reshuffling that is going on, we can't stop it. There's no way to stop it. There's only way, one way to stop it is to go on with the Lord. I told the students I was teaching at the School of Leadership in Jaws, I said, brothers, I do not want official authority. I do not want you to recognize me officially because I'm supposed to be recognized. I am praying that each day you can see Jesus. Let my influence end on your lives so that I won't be giving a false, a false assessment that I'm still in charge. And they were looking at me and said, that's, the, that, that's what I'm praying for. I do not want you to extend an invitation to me once life finished. I think it will be a help of God. Because I will quickly go back and say, Baba, is she? How? Why? Why is your voice so dry now? I want to say, sorry, you are missing something up. Then I will be able to trace it. But if all careless men who can see began to run around us, even before the rain thing comes, how will we not miss it up? So let's trust God to lead us on. We are going to arrive at God's purpose. And at the end, we will make a covenant again and say, Lord, I'm going. I'm going. And like God brought that man to Bethel and changed his life. That's our desire that God should put a seal on our ministries. And as we get back, we get a flame. And uh, those of us that are dragging our feet, we double up and say, No, I can't stay here before I'm pushed down. By the time Peter was dying, praise the Lord, he died in the Lord. I understand it. He still told us some prophetic utterances. But he couldn't finish before telling us that, please, there's one man called Mr. Paul, whose revelations <laughs> are difficult to be understood. <laughs> How can you don't come back? But many years behind, begin to have better revelation that even for him, it was difficult to understand. I know he's in glory now because he humbled himself. He taught us, he said, Look, brethren, God is to stay the proud, but he gave a grace to the humble. Let's humble ourselves unto the Lord. That's what he said. 
and he will lift you up in due season. Thank God for that. Thank God that his hand was on him throughout. But did he become all he is supposed to be? He was given the keys to open the door unto the Jews and to open the doors unto the Gentiles. And it was by force God took him to the house of Colinus. He didn't go there. And he went there, he was still being politicized. He said, you know, a person like me ought not to come here. When the master commissioned him to go and told him that what I've cleansed, how can you call it unclean? He still went. And before he finished, many questions was on his heart. The question is, if they even say they will repent, like, can I touch them? Can I baptize them? How can I touch them? Was God training him to go and uh, be a Judai, a Judaistic uh, preacher? Say, go ye into all the world and make disciples of all nations. That was what the master said. So God had to bypass him. The Holy Ghost came down, the people were speaking in tongues and shouting and rejoicing. And then he did not know when words came out of his mouth. He said, can we forbid water? Who can forbid water? Who can forbid water actually? Who is the one forbidding water? <laughs> Who was talking of water? <laughs> Nobody was talking of water. That was the real thing going on in the heart. He was preaching, he didn't want them to repent. Because he must not lose face with Jerusalem brethren. He didn't give out a call before the Holy Ghost came down. When the Lord received the Holy Ghost, he couldn't refuse again. He baptized them. He didn't touch them. He commanded the people that came with him to baptize them. And as soon as he went back in chapter 11, what did he do? He went and met the uh, council members headquarters. And they say, well, sorry, I didn't intend to go. I did not want to go. And sorry, please don't excommunicate me. And then when he's reported, it, okay, Peter, that's okay. But don't go there again. Did you follow them up? Eh? He did not. It had nothing to do with them. So go out to look for another man. Whom God said, it is the Gentiles. And he went on with it. So we must pray that what happened to them must not happen to us, whatever it will cost us. And as we are praying on, these are not small meetings, like we said. Meetings where God begins to reveal secrets of anointing, secrets of going forward, secrets of handling issues, which God is going to show us in the course of this meeting. It's not a small meeting. It's an investment. It will be terrible for any of us to go out here and misbehave. Terrible. One thing that bothers me is that most of our brothers who are preaching today, who are on the stage and all that, I don't think they have this exposure. That's why another thing I noticed. It does seem to me as if they, maybe they are too quick. Maybe nobody told them. Maybe nobody expected them. We don't know. So even if they failed, they may be given a little strife. That's why I don't even have the courage to say this man missed it, that man missed it, that man missed it. No! The denominator of my life ought to measure the fraction. If God has sat us down, many things, many, many things that I'm afraid when you come and you say, Brother, how is minister and all that? I'm so afraid. Afraid because of the things I have had God call me aside. Somebody came one day and said, You want to bring money? Big money. I said, Lord, should we receive this money? The Lord said, Yes, let me show you the principle of how not to receive money. He went and showed me the, 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 the life of Neymar, the life of Elisha. I say, whoa! Many times we are almost losing lives of men because we are good to receive their offering. Say, hey, he said, so others may be getting money. You can't. That's not the issue. 
You won't have money, but you will have an influence on my church. They will say, where is he getting on? How is he affecting the people? Where is it? There's something and there's nothing. And yet, God will do it. I felt much is laid on our lives. So when our brother was saying, will you go on? I felt like crying. I just felt crying. I said, Lord, whatever it costs, I've gone too far to return. It will be terrible. What else can I be preaching now? Can I develop a big stomach and begin to twist my tongue? What else? What is the use? If we want to be that, we should have been that 10 years ago. If we want to be something else, we should be that many, many years ago. But God is reserving us for something. May God help us to see it. And as we pray, let's pray on. Let's pray God. Lord, help us. Help us. This investment must not be a waste. This opportunity must not be a waste. This grace must not be a waste. And He is a faithful God. Uh, I'd like us to conclude and take our songbook. We just sing that one small song. Grace, thy grace alone, has brought me into thy will. Stranger and alien I have been, the grace brought me so nigh. Grace, thy grace alone, is all I plead for. Grace to serve thee a right Lord, oh grace to love you more. We soon discover that we need grace to pray. We need grace to be spiritual. We need grace to be holy, isn't it? We need grace to be on course. The pressure on our lives is too much. If there's no grace, we can fall off. So we take grace, thy grace alone has brought me to thy will. Stranger and alien, I have been. The grace brought me so nigh. Grace, thy grace alone. Is all I plead for grace to serve the right Lord. Oh, grace to love you more. Will it be difficult to know it? So let's take it. Grace, thy grace alone. Has brought me to thy will, stranger and alien I have been. Thy grace brought me so nigh. Grace, thy grace alone is all I pray for. Great is the heart I love, oh great to love you more. This grace that teaches me, thy path for me to know, and grace day by day leads me on. My call not to let go. Grace, thy grace alone is all I pray for. Grace to serve the right love. Oh, grace to love you more. I long for this grace, Lord, to be faithful as the world, to lay my all down for the church, to have glory for all. Grace, 